ओम वक्रतुंडमकाय सूर्यकोटिशुभप्रभ निर्विघ्न कुरुदेव सर्वकार्यु सरस्वती नमस्तभ्यं वरदेकामिनी विद्यारंभम करा सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरसाक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम शक्नोति शक्नोतिम द्राक्षर विमोक्षण विस्टैंड Master, the vegam, the force of karma and krodha. That person is a yogi, and that person is a sukhi. Is an is a happy person. So, so we are discussing that shloka. So sukhi. So therefore, that person was who has control, who manages likes and dislikes. Very well, that person is a mature person. It's a karma yogi. So sukhi na raha. Because it is not easy to master. Is it not easy not to come under the influence of the force of raga dvesha? Therefore, the one who is able to do must be a matured person. Therefore, that person, yogi, karma yogi, is a happy person. Before the release of the shed body, because the vega is there only with the body, still a shadi though. So therefore, that vega, the 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 sukha dukha only with the 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 soul the soul of prapancha the soul of shari ra. So therefore, sukha dukha dukham, the kama krodha is a cause for dukham pain. Therefore, that can be overcome by having mastery over. Or regulating the kamak krodha by who is able to withstand the force, the kamak krodha. So that person is sukhi, is an is a naraha sukhi naraha, is happy person sukhi naraha, is a yogi. Iti now karma yoga and the knowledge. Karma yoga and knowledge reflect the order. Karma yoga reflect the order. Karma yogi he abides by the order. therefore karma yoga reflect the order knowledge reflect the order order that is ishvara karma yoga is not possible without ishvara ishvara without that karma yoga doesn't exist so karma yoga implies ishvara so therefore it implies order karma yoga implies order 
in the previous shloka we saw that this person doesn't get carried away by mind's fancies knowing them to be their source, sources of pain and sorrow the person who is not carried away by such fancies is one who is the person who is carried away by such fancies is one who is subject to karma to his to his or a raga dvesha such a person cannot get the happiness that a yogi can get so whose mind is carried away by fancy so that person cannot be sukhi because fancy will lead to karma the intense desire the beginning the desire is the form of a the wild form then it once it becomes sangaha sanga sanjayate kamaha sangaha in the beginning through in the mind later physical first the sangha happens in the mind later physical therefore in the mind when it happens sangha the association with the object of desire that converted into kama so once it becomes a kama then it is it is difficult to control difficult to manage so before it become before it becomes kama so the karma yogi karma yogi knows the technique so he therefore because he knows he is aware of the order he knows what is to be done he knows the effects of this kama therefore he, he doesn't submit himself to the force of kama and krodha that is yes mastery over ka- kama krodha therefore he is sukhi whereas karmi who is under the influence of kama krodha he cannot be happy he cannot be a yogi thus there is an order involved here meaning that every one has to become a karma yogi first and then only gyanam karma yogi na chitta shuddhi chitta shuddhi is nothing but this last over agadvesha therefore without becoming a karma yogi one cannot become a gyana yogi and gyanam and moksha not possible if one is a karma yogi the knowledge will take care of itself when and when does all this take place in this life itself ihaiva thaiyajita sargaha esham samyesitam manaha visa shaknoti ihaiva so also here in this shloka ihaiva eha shaknoti here itself as we saw in the 19th shloka and also at any time until death until one releases from the body prakshari vimokshanat so while living while living means till the end of the life fag end of the life the yogi who is yet to be a gyani must enjoy this particular capacity the capacity is this mastery over karma and krodha you cannot simply say i have already mastered my karma and krodha it doesn't work it doesn't happen like that nobody can say even a sanyasi also cannot say he has this mastered karma and krodha till the the body is till the body is cremated and the ashes merges with the air no one can say that i have mastered karma and krodha nobody can say so as long as the shadhi is there karma krodha the impact will be there so therefore nobody can say it is so powerful it, it can influence and uh, topple the person possibly so therefore nobody can say a wise person will never say so i have already mastered my karma and krodha and then sit back and think they will not come back they will come back there is no such thing as one day i mastered them and therefore it will not come back it is not like that this is not a one day problem that one deals with for once this is an everyday problem therefore like the copper vessel which gets tainted every day every day it has to be cleaned otherwise it it will be have a, it will have a, a thick color coating difficult to remove so therefore this so one day this is not one day problem this is the everyday problem that has to be dealt with every day it is something which which you have to deal with every day let's say prakshari vimokshana every day till the end of the life until death shankaracharya makes it very clear here the fourth and every day job we have already seen that in terms of knowledge liberation or moksha can happen liberation or moksha can happen at any time in one's life even in old age antakale brahmantakale brahmanirvaram yesha brahmi stif pataha 
ఐనాం ప్రాపి విముగ్యతి స్థిత్వాసమంతకాలేపి బ్రహ్మ నిర్వాణం రుచ్యతి ఇది వ్యవస్థ నిర్దిష్ట ప్రజ్ఞ లక్షణ ఇది సెకండ్ చాప్టర్ లాస్ట్ శ్లోకం సో దాఫోర్ శంకరాచార్య ఎంపసైజర్స్ దట్ దిస్ ఇన్ ఇస్ భాష్యం టిల్ ది ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ లైఫ్ అంటిల్ డెత్ ఈవెన్ ఇన్ ఓల్డ్ ఏజ్ అట్ ఎనీ పాయింట్ ఇన్ వన్స్ లైఫ్ ఈవెన్ ఇన్ ఓల్డ్ ఏజ్ మోక్ష క్యాన్ హ్యాపన్ ఎనీ టైమ్ ఇట్ క్యాన్ హ్యాపన్ సో టిల్ ఇట్ హ్యాపన్స్ వన్ హ్యాస్ టు one has to withstand or one has to manage the force of Raghat Dvesha. This then is another meaning for the expression of Prakshari Vimokshanat at any time while living here in the world, in this physical body. In the physical body, any time this knowledge can take place, can be accomplished by a mature human being. At the force of Kama and Kuruda continues until death. In this commentary to this shloka, Shankaracharya emphasizes until death meaning to make it very clear that the Vega, the force released by Kama and Kuruda by one's Raghat Dvesha operates throughout one's lifetime until death just as the force of hunger and thirst does hunger and thirst thirst doesn't go it will be there as long as the body is there. similarly karma krodha also continues for the living person this vega definitely takes place it is not something that happens one day and goes away the next it is not like that then what is its cause the causes are endless Shankaracharya says, Ananta nimittavan hi saha vekaha. It has so many causes, reasons. Causes are endless. What causes, the desire, what causes angry? I cannot say that. What makes you angry? There are countless situations that cause anger. Therefore, there is no end to the force. The vega, which is born of karma and prodha. In certain situations, there will not be force. Whereas in other situations, the vega will be there in various degrees. and the karma krodha from which this force comes can be virulent can be sometimes highly virulent therefore therefore only one need, one needs to exercise alertness the person is not alert a person who is not alert is not a mature person a immature person therefore only an immature person will say that karma and krodha will not do anything so it can cause anything it can cause it can attack any person any time therefore that's for only prakshari moksha dinam dinam every day one has to manage not for the gyani of course it is not for the gyani we are not talking about a gyani gyanam can take place at any any time till the end of this life similarly this karma krodha also can continue for till the end as a for karma yogi or for agnani it continues so till then one has to need still gnanam takes place one has to need to have one has to have one needs to endure tolerate master needs to have needs, needs to have uh, the control over manage 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 the over ragat dvesha this kama krodha therefore only alertness the necessity for alertness until a person sees something he or she may not have kama at all yes that until the when the person sees a vishaya vishaya darshana it doesn't come it doesn't happen then dhyayato vishayan pumsaha then once the vishaya takes place that is why in the katopanishad there is a statement paranchikani vidrana swayam bhogu paran prashyati dan antaratma sense organs are meant extrovert because of by bhagavan because of by making it the, the bhagavan had destroyed the person means not literally destroyed sense organs are extrovert therefore sense organs objects by sense objects therefore when the person sees something hears something or touch something naturally the karma will arise so until a person perceives something karma may not arise until a person sees something he may or she may not have karma at all but once it has been sighted once there is contact of the sense organs with the sense objects then karma it takes place karma is there similarly there can be karma with reference to what is heard thus you find karma can take place any time which is why shankaracharya describes a vega as that for which the cause is endless endless causes endless reasons are there for karma to take place therefore in terms of tackling or mastering the force born of ragat dvesha karma krodha you must be alert you should not relax 
important uh, advice to the spiritual aspirants and more particular to the sannyasis. Therefore, one should not relax by sannyasi because sannyasa is one way. So, therefore, you cannot relax. Being a sannyasi, therefore, Kama Kurda will not attack. One cannot relax. This doesn't mean that you should become tense. That also important. It simply means you should not become indifferent, important. And from the standpoint of one who is a yogi and not a jnani, this alertness must continue until death. Yes, this is not for a jnani, it is for a yogi. A jnani also, suppose a jnani also come under the influence of this vega of Kamakura, then he is not a jnani. Then what is the benefit of jnana? So, this is only for the jnani, mamukshu, karma yogi, karma yogi. Therefore, he must be alert. Till when? Till death. Till the Sharia is dropped. As we have seen previously, Kama refers to both likes and dislikes, Raga Dveshas. Ishtavishyeshu Raga, Anishtavishyeshu Kroda, Raga Dvesha. So therefore, Kama means both, Raga Dvesha. If it is Ishtavishya, then there is Pravirti. Anishtavishya, then there is Nivirti. So therefore, Kama, both are Kama only, desires. Here the emphasis is mainly on Raga. That is, which is desired by you. Within the scope of your sense perception, an object is seen or heard. You may have experienced the object before as something desirable and therefore you may remember it. When you experience this object, it becomes the cause for your happiness and therefore it is desirable to you. Then you long for it. The longing is like the thirst for the objects that make you happy. Longing is called karma. The longing... Once longing is there, without getting that, you cannot become calm. The karma overrules the calm, calmness. Calm in, the, you were calm before karma takes place. Now karma disturbs the calmness. The calmness, the longing, because of longing, the calmness goes away. So, the calmness or the tranquility, relative calmness, relative tranquility, one, one needs to maintain always by being watchful, by being alert, because that can be overpowered by karma. When where karma is, there cannot be calmness. Where calm is, calmness is. If, it, if the person is a yogi, then he has to have extreme vigilance over karma. If it's a jnani, jnani is also calm. Then karma cannot touch him, cannot disturb him. So the calmness of whom? That's the question. So jnani or a yogi? Jnani is the calm, the, the shanti. That is Swarupa shanti. For yogi, karma yogi, is a sadhaka. So he, he needs to maintain that shanti, relative shanti. So that he can grow to be a, a he grow to be a person fit for jnanam. So therefore, one minister of relative shanti. Ashantasya kutasukam, we have seen. For the one who is not shantaha, who is not at peace, how can there be sukham for him? How can there be jnanam for that person? Jnanam cannot take place for ashanta purusha. The longing destroys the shanti. So the longing is called kama. And all desires are not the kama that we discuss here. Only we are discussing those which are binding. We have seen before. We are talking about the desires which are binding. Non-binding doesn't create any problem. Binding desires causes problem. Krodha is something born of your seeing or remembering something that is opposed to your desire, opposed, opposed to your longing, causing you pain. So Krodha is nothing but the manifestation of karma only. Naturally, between karma, the desire and Krodha, a certain pain is involved. Anger would not come unless there was pain in between. The pain, the pain in the form of not being able to enjoy the object of desire, get the object of desire, so that causes pain. So anger is an expression of pain. When your expectation is not fulfilled, there is pain. And, and what you consider to be the obstruction or the cause of the pain, that becomes the object of your anger. So the factor of, of the obstruction becomes the object of the krodha. Thus, kama itself causes causing pain, dislike and hatred turns in, itself into what we call a locked up anger, krodha. The force that arises out of this Kama Krodha, refer to this verse, refer to in this verse as Kama Krodha Doham Vegam, is what must be mastered. How do we know that there is a force? 
Shankar Chala gives a few interesting indications of its existence. When you hear or see something that you find so desirable that you long for it, what happens? Your very hair stands on it. Romanchana. Your horripilation. Romanchana means horripilation. Your eyes wide open. Ragrishta, netratva, and your mouth is a gap. gap. Ragrishta, vadan, vadanatva. These are the symptoms. Symptom. Shankaracharya says the influence of the karma, the force of the karma. Each culture has its own way of expressing karma. And this expression made, it takes many forms. Naturally, you express the force of your desires according to your culture. How you express also depends on how cultured you are. <laughs> so beautiful. So expression depends on your culture. And how you express also <laughs> depends on how civilized, how cultured you are. Shankaracharya also gives a few symptoms of the force of Kuroda. They are shaking of the body. Gatra prakam, prakampa. Gatra that means the body. Prakampa, shaking, sweating, prasveda, bloodshot eyes, eyes becomes red, rakta netra, biting the lips, sandashta, oshta, oshta, putatva, biting the lips. So these are the symptoms of kurodha. Other symptoms of the force are rising out of anger or shouting, screaming, heavy breathing and so on. Of course, the breathing, breathing is disturbed, kurodha. That is why pranayama, that time one must have, one must at least, one must at least recognize that he is in anger. If the person knows that he is in anger, and if he, did, if he does pranayama, that doing pranayama at that time requires some control, some mastery. So the person must be available for remembering the technique, pranayama technique, and doing it. The anger subsides, at least comes down. The impact of anger will be less. Because there is a, 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 a connection between breathing and between breathing and anger. In anger, there is heavy breathing. So if you control the breathing, anger will subside. And so on. When you are not anger, when you are in normal mood, the breathing is normal. When you are in anger, the breathing becomes abnormal, heavy breathing. So therefore, pranayama. But one must be alert, one must... Recognize that one is in anger. Must have one must take responsibility, responsibility of oneself and do control. I mean, do pranayama so that you can control anger, can make the anger subside at least first, so that the, the consequence may not be dangerous against him. So it all requires some mastery. That's why vega kama krodat bhavam vegam vegam sodum shaknoti. One who is able to withstand. The force of Kamakroda. When the force of Kamakroda is there, you are no longer in charge. The force itself is in charge. That way, Vega. The Vega can be seen both in Kama and Kroda. In Kama also, the Vega is there. And Kroda, it is more seen. The force. Both are forces. The uncontrolled forces leads to destruction of the person. So this, this, this is a force that is to be mastered. The methods for which were already pointed out in the third chapter, where Kama Yesha Krodha Yesha Jogunat Samudhavaha Atakena Prayuktayam Papam Charati Purushaha Iti Arjuna has when Bhagavan replied. So, what is the, what is, how you mastered by the methods which are already pointed out in the third chapter about Karma Yoga, where Krishna talked about Karma Yoga. In fact, self-mastery is mentioned all over Gita. It is self-mastery. Tasmatam indriyan yadu yamya bharata rishyabha iti first indriya nigraha, starting from indriya nigraha. Once kam, krodha comes, nothing can be done. But before the krodha arises, that is, from the beginning one itself, we have to, starting from the indriya, indriya nigraha onwards, so, how to master anger? Not after it arises. Before. It is prevention. What is self-mastery? Self-mastery comes with a discipline in life. Having a sound value structure that includes prayer and prayerful attitude. Prasada buddhi. All of which we have seen. That is what karma yoga is. self prayer, Prasada buddhi. Prayer, prayer, prayerful attitude. This attitude is based on a glad acceptance of what is living in conformity with the order of dharma and appreciating this order as Ishwara. 
If you live in this way, you find that karma, krodha, veha loses its sting. Even if anger comes, you are not overcome by it. Only this way you, you become one who has mastery, self-mastery, who is a yogi. As a yogi, you are in charge. Therefore, you are a cheerful person, sukhi. Otherwise, you will have a yo-yo life, wherein the vega takes care of you. Under the spell of this vega, you are likely to do something because you are no longer rational. Whatever wisdom or culture you have becomes useless when the vega born of your desire and anger is in charge. Whereas, one who is able to address this problem, who can withstand this force, he is a nara. In fact, he, is a, he should be called a nara, a mature human being. It's an important uh, point. But, uh, what is self-mastery? That person becomes cheerful, who, is, who takes in charge of oneself. So, who is a cheerful person? That person who has self-mastery. Who has mastery over the force of Ragad Dvesha. So, therefore, therefore, the problems must be addressed. People do not address this problem at all. For the most part, suffer under the force of Kama Kruda for the entire lifetime. They are in problem at the same time. Don't recognize this problem. Don't see the solution. Don't seek the solution for this problem. So they are all dictated by Kama Kuroda, Ragat Dvesha. They, they live a life of Vega and then they die. Just like, like, just like a programmed being. They do not even have a chance to address a problem. But everything does seem to happen finally for the good. In that, there seems to be a new awareness in the society today. For example, alcoholism has been causing problems that we are not really aware of until fairly recently. But now it is understood that everyone who lives or has lived in a house where alcohol is used is affected. And because of this realization, a huge movement has resulted, a brand new wave that is not an ordinary one, in which it is commonly accepted that there is no way of resolving this problem without addressing them directly. And to do this, it is also accepted that there must be prayer and religious conversion. A religious conversion, not uh, converting to other religions. So one has to become a, a religious person. Prayer, prayerful attitude. Religious conversion. A better society may be the natural outcome of this particular awareness alone because those who go through this program of conversion, spiritual conversion, not religious, religious, becoming religious, and experience the changes that such a program implies will become really saintly people. These people will be sensitive to the problems of others. A spiritual person only really will be sensitive. They will be, be they will be people who do not harm to others, who are very understanding and mutually help to each other. Once this knowledge arises, this, this understanding, not causing harm to others, we don't want to uh, we don't want to be harmed by others. Similarly, others also don't want to be harmed. So once this sense arises, understanding out of understanding. Then they start helping each other. It's a big thing, though it looks common and simple, but it's a big thing to follow, understand and follow. Therefore, having come through their own problems, they understand the problems of others. That's important, yes. They know what pain is, why others have why the why others behave the way to do. There's an understanding because of their experience. So therefore, perhaps then we are in a new society. Because of alcohol, alcohol has created awareness. Addressing the problem, therefore, addressing the problem is the main point here. Okay, we'll complete this. Then you have a problem. Then you have a problem is not important because you're not responsible for it. It has been picked up all over a period of time. How we picked up, we don't know, but we have picked up. You did not go out looking for your problem because you... You want to do a problem. So either there are problems that you happen to pick up. You gather these problems for a period of time. Then suddenly you realize see, the problem. Then you must address them. Once you realize the problem, you must address them here while when while living. That is why Iga. Chaknoti Iga Yeva. Here while living in in this type, in this physical body. In this physical body, when Stola Shariram is in intact that time, only before you die, Praksharira Vimokshanat. First, we pick up the problems and then we solve them. We are the problem creators and we are the problem solvers. Therefore, we are. So, therefore, first uh, problem already created, 
Therefore, that we solve. Without solving the problem, one cannot sustain with the problem. Because problem is there, therefore, every problem has a solution. Then we must solve them. We must seek to solve them. This seems to be how growth is. We create hurdles and then try to jump over them. We create our own obstruction hurdles. And we try to jump. This is, that is the fun of it all. That is the fun of the whole life. Life is like a hurdle race. The race itself is fun. But when you create hurdles and then try to jump over them, it makes the race even more fun. Because you have free will, the situation is inevitable. The creation, the world is like what it is. Because it cannot be any, it cannot be any better right now. If, it, if I have already programmed, that is without free will, then there would be no human being at all. Like the animals, if we are also not programmed, then there will be no problem. The order, the society will function. There will not be any human society. Animals will not abuse the free will. Because human beings are endowed with free will. Therefore, only the problems are all problems are human problems. Therefore, if this, when we are not, when you don't enjoy free will, then there will be no problem. There would be neither Gita nor any further evolution. Therefore, to be a human being in place, free will and therefore choice. Once free will is given to, to, to you, then wisdom is something that has to be gathered by you. In other words, by free will. Again, the free will. Everyone is given innocence first. Then while innocent, you gather problems. But you will become also mature. Enough experiences, enough pain, enough sorrow is given to you so that you can become an adult. Thus, you find that the person who addresses a problem, that person, Suki. Suki is a person who doesn't become Suki automatically. He addresses a problem, therefore becomes a Suki. Saha Suki, Saha Naraha. He's a Karma Yogi. Karma Yogi is one who works for Chitta Shuddhi. So, therefore, that, for that person who addresses a problem, that person is a Suki. Doesn't become Suki. Overnight, or doesn't become Sukhi by chance. That's why he is a Yeti. He puts effort. A Karma Yogi is also called Yeti. Yeti, the word you use for Sanyasi, even though the word is used for Sanyasi, it also means Yogi because he works for it. He attempts, he works, he, 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 he applies himself for solving the, the problem of this, the force of Karma and Krodha. Therefore, you find a person who addresses a problem, that person becomes an happy person. Suki Naraha. Yuktaha Naraha. Yuktaha Suki Naraha. Yuktaha Karma Yogi. Karma Yogi is aware of the problem and he has resolved to solve, resolved to address the problem. That person becomes a happy person finally. This person alone is a true human being. Therefore, to be a sane human being, one has to be a Karma Yogi. Who is a sane person? That person is a sane person who is a Karma Yogi. Karma Yogi is, he, he appreciates the order. He understands the functioning of the order. He understands, therefore, awareness of Ishvara. Therefore, he does what is to be done. Doesn't take anything for granted. Therefore, the Karma Yogi, who is one who is ready to take the next step, meaning that the person is, or the person mind is being prepared or prepared for the knowledge to happen. That is the next step. It's so, a beautiful explanation. So we'll stop here. 24 the shloka, which describes the person who has its knowledge. We'll see you tomorrow. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namada Chate Pur Nasya Pur Namada Yabur Nameva Vashishate Om Shantashantashantihi Hari Om Shri Guru Vyo Namaha Hari Om Sanyavadaha Sanyavadaha